From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Let's just get it done, okay? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Sitting here in one of the areas of Southern California, fortunately, that is not affected by the wildfires, but uh, many of the listeners in our area have been affected. Uh, when I say our area, of course, I mean where those of us who do the Tom Likas show live here in Southern California. Many people are affected. And I wanted to talk to all the people who are affected and who have stories to tell about evacuation, stories to tell about loss, stories to tell about fear, stories to tell about helping their friends and neighbors. Scary out there, folks. By the way, um, I drove through Orange County and saw some of the devastation just because I was going to visit some friends. I had a little backyard event on Saturday. And uh took me uh, easily several hours to get back to Los Angeles because every freeway was choked with smoke and traffic. And um, if you haven't seen this stuff close up, if all you've seen is, you know, some distant shots on TV or some photographs of the newspaper... Uh, go to our MySpace, because many people have been sending us now their own photos they've taken of this devastation. Some of it is not devastation. Some of it is just distant smoke, distant flames. But some people had amazing views to see this stuff, and they photographed it, and they sent it in to us. If you want to send us a photo, we'll post it. Send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And you can see the whole collection of our listeners' photographs of these amazing fires at myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Myspace.com slash Tom Likas. Go to photos there and you can see many photos. And they're still continuing to come in. And we will post them as they come in at myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. If you were directly affected by these Southern California wildfires, uh, call us and tell us your story. 1-800-5800-TOM is our number. 1-800-5800-866. Sal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Um, kind of like a couple of callers that you had a little while ago. Um, I actually live in Green River myself where it started. And um, I live on the west side. Uh, there's a west and an east side. And it started on the east side, and it's uh, it's nothing you want to ever experience in your life. Um, it's only something that that you see in the movies. Um, you know, my wife kind of got me out of bed and just jolted me out of bed, and you know, I jumped up, grabbed a pair of shorts, went outside, and you know, I kind of smelt it from downstairs. And as soon as you walk outside, you just get this wave of of smoke that's just kind of coming over you, and um, it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, this massive amount of smoke is just in the air and the, with the wind gusts like it was, it was just, it was unreal. You just see the, the, the ash in the air. Um, I kind of actually went walking through the community just to see as a kind of a, at first like a spectator, just to see where I can figure out where it was coming from. And you could see these big old black plumes of smoke. And uh, as I was walking down, like, these little streets and finding, following the fire trucks, I actually found myself right in the middle of, of all the involvement. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear this guy yelling, my house is on fire, and he's running in and out, um, you know, of the house carrying stuff. And, you know, then next thing I know, I became, I was in the middle of it. Um, I ran inside the house, and I'm like, what can I do? It's like instinct takes over. You know, you're no longer just a spectator. Like a guy, guy of, uh, you know, I don't know, about 10, 15 minutes ago, it's like, you know, you become a community. You know, you kind of, you may not know these people, but indirectly you kind of feel like you, you need to help everybody. You're kind of like, you build like a, kind of like a bond with everybody. You know, we're all here for each other. And, you know, you kind of feel like the sense of, you know, like a neighbor, a neighborly type thing. And, you know, you just can't stand back and watch someone's house go up in flames. You know, this guy's palm tree was literally on fire and it's about a good 50, 60 feet up in the air. And, 
we just see these, um, you know, these palms on fire, and, you know, they're breaking away, and, and everything is just falling on the roof of the house. And, you know, even though we have, you know, clay tiles or ceramic tiles, you know, these ashes are smoldering underneath the tiles, and they can still catch the house. I mean, the houses are still burning, you know. So I kind of grabbed the hose away from the sky, and I'm telling them, you get inside and you get your property. Let me stay out here and take care of business, you know. Let me worry about this. And, you know, I mean, there's just stuff that's falling down all around you, you know. And, I mean, it's, again, you feel like you're in a movie. It's just, it's. It's the most god awful feeling you ever want to experience in your entire life. How much of this was god awful, and how much of it was scary? I, I I know your opinion on God, and you know. So let me rephrase that. It's it, it was awful. Let me rephrase that. It was just it was scary. I mean, even just kind of reliving it again, it 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 was. You know, I get chills just now reliving it. You know, because I'm kind of reliving it now, just explaining it. You know kind of reliving everything again it, it really is it's you know things are kind of i'm kind of getting flashbacks you know on step by step on what happened and you know seeing the, seeing this woman just buckle down because she's afraid of losing her home and you know everything that she put into her home and just the thought of her losing everything that she worked for you know and fortunately i i was at her house after she left and the thought of her house still being there, you know, when I left, and then I saw her actually parked down the street, still in the community, and it did feel kind of good stopping by her and letting her know, hey, your house is still intact, you know? So when you go home, be assured that your house will still be there, you know, untouched by the fire. And just the sense of relief that came over her, you, you could just tell, it was just like, just lifted off her shoulders. Wow. Wow. Amazing story. Thank you for that, Sal. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Edgar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Okay, son. Well, this is like my third time calling you, but unfortunately, this is one of the situations where no one wants to be, <laughs> be on the other side of the phone. I do live in Jorba Linda, right by uh, Jorba Linda Boulevard and Calla Drive. I was not evacuated, but I have friends who live in the San Antonio Hills area, and uh, they actually called me out to let me know if I could give them a hand to get out their dogs and their family out. So we head up out there. I got my wife to help out his wife to get everybody out, and we're in the middle of everything uh, when we happened to find out that we run out of water. <laughs> really? There was no water running. I, be uh, I believe the uh, pumping station burned to the ground. There was no water running everywhere. There was firefighters around the neighborhood, and they were telling us that they, there's nothing they can do because there was no water anywhere. Unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fortunately, I did own a couple of years ago a mobile home cleaning business, and I kept some of the equipment, so I have a water pump in my house. So I drove back, put it on my truck, came back to my friend's house, and we plugged it into his pool. And we were watering, uh, we just... Uh, spreading every, water everywhere we could to make sure the house didn't burn and unfortunately his house got damaged. Now, uh, were you scared? Were you sad? Were you frightened? How do you feel? It's a sense of uh, frustration. I was, uh, I could say I was scared to a point. I'm a former Marine, so I, I tried to keep my cool with him, tried to give him support. You know, he's one of my fellow Marines as well, so we're there for each other and uh then doesn't matter what the problem is, we try to, to help. It was more like a frustration to know that we have all the resources to help everybody out, but the main ingredient was missing, and there was no way to bring water from down the hill. That, wow. That was uh, very, very sad. Uh, he lost, I believe, 40% of his house is gone, so uh, he's actually staying with us right now, his family. You know, I, um, I told him that you don't need to worry about it for right now. You know, I have a house. You're welcome. You and your family are welcome to come over with us, and it's hard to see a uh, uh, couple. Uh, apparently, they've been living in the area for about, I don't know, 50, 60 years, and the, front, uh, the whole history of the family is going down in flames because there's no water. And really, it's a shock to see everybody just crying and running desperately out, trying to trying to make it. Wow. 
Edgar, thank you. Thank you for being a good neighbor to your neighbors, and uh, thank you for the call. If you're directly affected by the Southern California wildfires, we want to hear your story. If you'd like to see the photos that have been sent in by our listeners that they took in the middle of all this chaos, go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas. It's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Likas Show. Show. For the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had, it's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. And we continue with your telephone calls, people telling their stories of how they are affected by the Southern California wildfires. Uh, go to our MySpace, go to MySpace.com slash Tom Likas and see our listeners' photos of the fires. MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. See what we're talking about here, especially if you don't live in Southern California. It's pretty outrageous. Paul on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, I told your screener that uh, I wasn't sure I could make this call or make it to this call. I'll tell you, I don't want to diminish anybody's losses at all, and I understand uh, people's attachment to their things and even their pets. But uh, eight years ago, I lost a, we lost our son, who was a senior at Berkeley, in a fire. And so um, we have a perspective that's a little different, and I just wanted to pass that on that, that uh, we've gotten through it. It's tough. It's tough every day, every year. But um, things are things. Pets are only good for eight or ten years anyway. Um, and I just think that it'd be uh, if people can kind of get a bigger picture that if they've got their lives uh, and their families, that's probably the uh, everybody knows that's the most important thing anyway. But it, but it was uh, it's something that we keep in perspective with these fires. We say, oh, just it's, it's it's too bad. But then we say to ourselves, well. If we lost our house, we still would uh, think it wasn't the worst thing in the world. When you see a story like this on television, does it affect you differently than the average person watching on television? Do you think? Uh, yeah, it probably. Does. I can't. T- I can't. Ex- I can't say it doesn't. Uh, we we don't change the channel. We don't sit there. I mean, I think, frankly, there's so much coverage anyway. It's almost impossible to see anything else. And I, I think about the uh, scope of it, and we know some people who are in Orange County, uh, in the uh, we're down in Newport Beach, and uh, in Orange County, people who are, uh, are, are uh, in that area, in the Yorba Linda, uh, Anaheim Hills area, and yet, uh, and they fortunately were a couple, three miles away. We did keep in touch, uh, but it's uh, you know, I think it's just horrible. And, and I see a house going up, and I think, well, they're saying, well, thank God everybody's got evacuated, they're out. Uh, so I'm saying, okay, well. I hope they've got good insurance to recover that. But, um, you know, the, the bigger picture is you uh, uh, lose, lose a son, and it's, uh, it's it puts things into perspective. It's got to be uh, difficult. And I have to imagine that as we head into the holiday season and you're seeing these uh, the images on TV, that's got to be hard. Yeah, yeah, it, it's true. It's true. We, you know, Thanksgiving was our big holiday of the year. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's it's tough. But um, here again, I don't want to diminish anybody else's losses, and uh, you know, it's, it's, I just want people to maybe get my perspective on it, uh, because I hope nobody else goes through what we did. I know other people have, but it's uh, it's uh, horrible. Paul, thank you. I know that was hard for you. Appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Wow, that does put it in perspective, doesn't it? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Were you directly affected by the Southern California wildfires? It's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm okay. Um, well, Tom, we sold our house uh, back in '05, right in the peak of everything, and you, we've been writing for the last three years, just kind of waiting for the market to come back. Long story short, we uh, found a ha- house in Anaheim Hills, uh, open escrow last week, and it went up in smoke. Really. Uh, yeah, man. So we, I was, uh, I heard the fires were going. Actually, we could see it from where we were. The smoke went up there and uh, sent my wife down with my kids down to my parents' house. Just I didn't want them to go up. I didn't know what was going on. I just wanted to go make sure. I, I had no idea that the house would be. You just never think it's going to happen to you. Let me ask you a weird question. You did not 
finish the escrow, I imagine. You did not no, close escrow. That's what we've been, I've been doing all that all, all day because we gave a $40,000 deposit, uh, an escrow deposit. Um, so that's that's kind of what we've been going back and forth all day. But they don't want to give the deposit back? Well, no, it's, they're going to give it back. Obviously, it's uh, the, the the loan was not closed, so the home was not mine yet. It, it, it still belongs to the to the owners who were living there prior, but the home was vacant, th- thank goodness. Um so, yeah, it's not going to be an issue. I spoke with my realtors, and they're going back and forth. Everything's going to be fine. Let me ask uh, you a weird question. All right. Uh, you know, you, you looked for this house. I'm sure you looked at 50 or 100 houses before you picked it. At least. There's plenty of inventory. and This was the perfect one. You always think it's the right. one, right? So uh, do you feel lucky or sad? You know what? I it, I, I have a mixed it's mixed emotions, like that last caller said. We, I, I lost nothing, Tom. Really, I, except for the dream of that home. But compared to what some other people lost, it's it's really nothing. Um, I felt bad looking at it going up. When I got there, the trees in the backyard were on fire. So I tried to grab a hose that was there, and the water's not on yet, of course. Um, but people were losing their houses with furniture and pets, and you know, I, I really all we lost was the option of purchase his home and i, I feel uh, almost guilty for for not losing anything if, if that makes any sense at all yeah well, I, I understand that too i just think uh, imagine uh, if you'd closed escrow a week before i know i know it's just, and you, you know it's um you always think what if but uh thankfully um you know nobody got hurt at least on the coldest side and it was kind of neat to show up on the, the house was empty nobody knows who we are yet and there was people out there with buckets just throwing them on the grass, just trying to help. You know, so it was kind of neat to see that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 a horrible thing that happened. And uh, that's the price we pay for living in sunny Southern California, right? Well, uh, yes, in a way it is, unfortunately. Uh, of course, uh, you know, and, uh, amazingly, it's, it is a wonderful place. And that's why 40 million of us still stay in California, because... Uh, despite the fact that we have mudslides and earthquakes and fires and what have you, there's no better place in America to live. You know, and we had that shake, uh, the shakeout drill last week, and, uh, you know, it's amazing that we don't have more practice for these fires because it happens each and every single year at this time. Um, but we prepared last week for that shake off with the earthquake, but. Nothing for the fires. You well, can't. it also appears that we're having more fires than we've ever had. I, you know, I've lived here 21 years, and uh, it, it's it, gotten worse the last 10 years, right, Tom? No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, maybe we do need to uh, have drills for everybody. Well, thanks for taking my call, Tom, and uh, good luck to everybody. And uh, I think it's a good thing. I'll email you some pictures when I get back to the house. Mike, uh, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I'm. Uh, this is. I. I. I just wanted to call in. I was at uh, Green River Golf Course Saturday morning, and about ten thirty, ten forty five. That's actually where the fire started, and they, the marshals came through, and they. They uh, ushered and kicked everybody off the course, evacuated the whole course, and uh, so. But we saw the fire just come through on the hillside, and it was so windy; it just passed us so quick. And uh, after that, they they kicked us off, and we were wondering why they kicked us off. But when we got to the parking lot, we saw all the fire department and everything camping out there, getting ready to set up shop there. So um, that fire, though, it definitely came through quick. I, I live in Anaheim Hills, and. This is probably our third or fourth fire that we've been through. So, um, we do you do you ever think? I, do you ever think maybe I want to move somewhere else? Well, no, it's it's a great area. You know, we're actually probably three or four streets from the hillside. So, when they evacuated us, you know, we've been through this before. It's it's not so much the evacuation. It's just if we leave, we, we know we take the chance of not being able to get back in because they block off all the major streets and intersections. Yeah, I was in that area on Saturday night. I saw in the traffic and the commotion and the smoke. Yeah, you know what was interesting here on the Anaheim Hillside? The wind was blowing. It was blowing west and, and north. So everything on the east side or the south side of the freeway was clear, but everything was just blowing towards Yorba Linda, Fullerton, L.A. area. It was just blowing west. So... Actually, on the Anaheim Hillside, other than where the fire caught, everything was pretty much clear. But the winds, you know, that, those winds, wind conditions, you never know what's going to happen. Wow. 
Thank you, Tom, for the story. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brian. So I was up in, uh, in Chino Hills on Saturday night. I live there. And uh, right up the hill from uh, from me, my buddy lives on top of it. And you, you could actually watch the fire progress over the hills. And I mean, watched Transformers pop, and it just came down, and it was it was insane to watch. I was there when they gave the uh, mandatory evacuation order. Um, my buddy and I stayed at his house. We got his family out and just watched the fire climb to us. And, and you know, hats off to the uh, CDF. They did a great job. They came in, you know, 50, 60 guys come in and, uh, you know, just they marched right into the line of the, of the fire. And it was amazing to see them giving up so much for, you know, other people. You know, wow. people, you know, people they don't even know. You know, they're going out there marching right into this fire, setting back fires. I mean, at, at one point, we were about 20 feet from probably a, a wall of 50 foot flames. Wow. It's amazing. And especially considering, I mean, these, you know, the CDF is, is composed of mainly inmates, I believe. And, you know, yes, they're the, you know, the good workers, but they're out, you know, they're doing their job. And they just, you know, no fear, just went out there and they did it. It was, it was insane to see. And hats off to them and, and every other fire that's out there busting their butt to, uh, you know, save people's homes. And luckily, nothing was lost in Chino Hills, as far as I can, as far as I've been, I've heard. Uh, but I, was, I was pretty much there the, the entire time. I didn't, you know, get back into my house until about seven thirty in the morning. But it, it was really cool to see. What know, did the, you do all night? I uh, mainly watched it. Uh, we watered down the uh, my neighbor's house. Um, you know, multiple times there like that. The the yards, we we hit the neighbors' houses. They were already gone, but we went ahead and you know watered them down just to make sure that you know if, if the it was mainly the embers. The wind was blowing semi away from the house, but we were more worried about the the embers and everything like that because it it was crazy to see. I mean, it was down in a canyon, and once it came up that canyon, I mean, it, it would hit a tree and embers would just fly like crazy. Ah, oh, my God! Thanks for the call. Time. Like is 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 The Tom Likas Show Firefighters, police officers, Red Cross workers All trying to help and comfort people and protect their stuff Protect their lives You can't just pretend that's not happening It's 1-800-5800-TOM Send us your photos if you took photos of the fires uh, especially if you were in the middle of it all. Uh, we're posting all of that. Send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com, and uh, we'll post your photos on our MySpace. Send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. If you'd like to see the listeners' photos, go to MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. It's MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brian. Hey. I'm still locked out of my house. <laughs> what? I, I live in the Sleepy Hollow part of Common Canyon, and we're still locked out. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, now, I'm, do you know if your house is okay or not okay? Yeah, my my girlfriend caught a ride from a newscaster today to get into it, and they, she said it's all right. She said it's burned down to the backyard, but a, a block from my house in the in the richer part of the neighborhood, they're playing golf. So that's the only thing that kind of irritated me. <laughs> well, some normalcy anyway. Yeah, but but I'm thankful my house survived and the firefighters. I, I'm very thankful for that. Wow. Yeah. Now, were you afraid? Were you annoyed? How, how did you feel? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, it's part of living in the the hills, I guess, and the views we get, but. And, I mean, when the fire got to be a glow, um, we gathered up what, the things that are really important, and we, le we left. <laughs> wow. Wow. Unbelievable. All amazing stories we're getting here. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Time on time. Thank I you so much for calling in, Mike. I had a motorhome and a sandrail, and I didn't have any insurance, and it, it's all gone. Now, were you in a trailer park, or where was that motorhome located? Uh, it was it was uh, over by somewhere. There was a motorhome park, and then down below there was a switchyard. 
and I had it parked in the storage yard. And uh, the fires came through, and, and I, you know, parked in a storage yard. I didn't pay insurance on my motor on that thing. The only thing left of that is a frame, and then I had a sandrail I just bought for $25,000. I took it out one time to Glamis. I, I probably didn't even get eight hours on it, and it's nothing but a, a frame. Everything's gone. Just melted. And uh, so the uh, the loss to you is what, about $100,000? Uh, yeah, I, I think probably around fifty with the motorhome and the and the sand rails all together. It was an older motorhome, but it's it's. I mean, it's it's all gone. I mean, we have we, you know. But I go up there and I see all those mobile homes that are just gone, and I'm like, you know, at least I I still have a house, but it, it was still hard to get that motorhome and hard to get the sand rail when you finally get it. And now it's gone. You got to start over. But I guess it could have been a lot worse. But you know, it's just a bummer. Yeah. Wow, Mike. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Doug on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Dad? How we doing? Doing okay, son. Good. Good. I'm just sitting in traffic on ten, waiting to get home so I can get my uh, bags for the fire. Um, actually, in the the military, and we're getting ready to get deployed out to the fires to help the people out. Um, they actually called on us just recently. We got the call. And we'll be heading out there pretty soon. So Now, do you have any idea what you'll be assigned to do? Um, I, as far as I know, uh, when, they, when they had the old fires in 2004 up by the high desert and all that, uh, we were driving around in Humvees and a actually evacuating uh, communities and, and also helping out with the fire department and, and actually taking care of the fire part of it. Um, they actually sent us to a uh, three-week training course for that and was able to take care of it. Uh, so we're out there for all aspects, um, able to help out. So, Wow. Doug, thank you for that, and thank you for your hard work, too. Wow. Bravery, all of it. It's a complete package. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is RJ on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you, RJ. Hey, the reason I'm calling is not, you know, I didn't get to as much drama as everybody else has, unfortunately, but actually it's a good thing. Um, we were we were already in Bakersfield, but we live here in Anaheim Hills right off of Weir Canyon. And a friend of mine, we both worked together at Atlas Air in Whittier, calls me up and says, hey, you need to check, you know, the Internet. Your, uh, your home's being evacuated. The fire's coming right towards you. And I couldn't even enjoy watching the uh, Brock Lesnar and Randy Couture fight, just knowing my Harley and my, and my Tundra were going to go up in flames. But, Fine. but fortunately it didn't. We're, we're okay. We made it home last night and everything's good, so we're all right. Well, I'm glad to hear that, RJ. Uh, uh, were you scared? Were you sad? Were, what were your feelings? Oh, I was I was getting drunk. I was scared. I was worried. I'm like, give me another shot. I, I was sitting there watching uh, OCRegister.com and watching the uh, the evacuation and the red and the blue and the the, the yellow and seeing uh, which area. And we just keep seeing the red growing, growing closer and closer to our home. And I, we were just freaked out. Wow. We just, uh, we've got a, my wife just got pregnant. She's about three months pregnant right now, and we just thought for sure we we're going to come home to nothing. RJ, thank you for telling us your story. We're talking to people who are directly affected by these Southern California wildfires. The number to call, 1 800 5800 Tom. Randy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Um, well, my fam, my, my house is the first house, but. On Green River, my kids and my wife was actually out mowing the lawn in the back, and they looked up and saw the fire starting off the freeway. They called 911, and uh, it was just a small little fire right up on the top, and they came. the fire department came over there. They called me at work, and I took off to head home. But it started, and I think it was like within five minutes, it was at my back fence, and it just – the fire department, they, they brought a, a fire truck in my driveway – uh, over through my back fence, and then they had another one on the other side, and it was so fast. It came so fast that the fire truck below the fence got overwhelmed. They just dropped their hoses and and took off, left the hoses there. A couple of the firemen got burnt, and it just. I mean, it was like by the time I got home, it was. I mean, you couldn't see in front your hand in front of your face. It was it was unbelievable. It just just took over the whole neighborhood within about ten minutes. And they made a stand in my backyard, and my house 
my structure got saved, and I think we lost. I think was it ten or twelve houses in the in the track, honey. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. But my kids were like I said, it was just ten minutes, and it was it was all over us. Wow. It was pretty amazing. Now, uh, were you more scared, more sad, more frightened? What was your feeling? Oh, my feeling was that when I when I got home, my kids and my family was already gone. So I pulled down the street, and the fire department told me to get out of there. So I I took my truck and I drove it outside the gates to a little bit guarded gate area. And I with me and two of my buddies, we ran back and uh, manned the hoses and shovels and. We stayed up till about three in the morning, uh, putting out smaller fire because they fire department they moved on down, so we just stayed there and, and dealt with it. We weren't scared at all. We were just tired, just dealing with it. Wow, uh, Randy, thank you for that. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Uh, just taking a moment out here to. Uh, Find out how everybody's dealing with the wildfires in Southern California. Give you an opportunity to vent. Give you an opportunity to send in photos if you've taken any. Uh, we'd like to see what the the fire looks like, uh, where you are, the smoke, the craziness, the helicopters dropping water and chemicals on everything. Uh, send it in to us at Tom at BlowMeUpTom dot com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And we are posting all of these photos on our MySpace. So you'll be able to take a look at them by going to MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. That's MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Tom. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood, California. It's one 800 tom Are you directly affected by the devastation of the Southern California wildfires? I want to hear your story at one 800 800 tom Here's Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Anna. Hi. You busy over there? I'm sorry? I said, are you busy over there? Uh, we're trying to hang in here, trying to get everything together. What's happening? Uh, right now, we're just kind of waiting. Um, today, uh, we were able to go to Stomar High School. and Wait a minute, um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, you talked to the screener, and you told him things that he didn't tell me or the audience. So I, you left out the most important part of what you called to tell me, which I imagine is why you need to go to a high school. Uh, the reason why we were going to the high school was um, they were going to have shuttles, shuttle, you know, taking us to uh, our mobile home park to kind of view the last of where our mobile home was standing. Wait a minute. You know, here's what you didn't tell us. What happened to your mobile home? Our mobile home was burned down on the Oak Ridge fire that started off Friday night. Okay. I don't, I don't mean to sound li like a dope, but I, ne I ne never heard what happened to you. All I heard was that you were going to a high school. Okay, yeah. On Friday night, um, the fire started on Sayer, and it um, traveled all the way down to um, our mobile home park, where, you know, 500 other mobile home parks were destroyed by this fire. Wow. And uh, when did you first get wind that this was coming at you? Um, you know what, we didn't think it was going to get this far until we finally, um, we saw the, the, the fire that was on one of the mountains by our home and, um, we didn't have much time. Um, the lights went off on us, um, as we were trying to take some stuff out of our home. Um, the police were already, um, you know, evacuating us. It was a mandatory evacuation. They were basically just telling us that we needed to leave as soon as possible. Um, you know, we weren't able to get much much out of our homes. It just happened so fast. It traveled so fast that I, in the blink of an eye, you know, it was, everything was just going. We're, we're all leaving as soon as we can and just trying to get a few memories out of our home. What did you have to leave behind? You know, I have two girls, so um, just 
the most important thing to me was just, you know, baby clothes that I had saved from them. Um, just memories of them when they were babies and as they were growing up, you know, uh, we left behind that stuff that it's not replaceable. Nobody can ever give me that back. Were you just scared? Did you have time to be sad? At this um, point, it was... Um, it wasn't sad, it was just fear, you know, fear. Um, like I said, I didn't think it was going to hit us this hard, but um, it did. And um, I think we were all still kind of hoping that it wasn't true, but the weather wasn't helping at all either. Now, that's certainly true. And were you sad later? Yes. I think it was up to Saturday night. Um, we kept watching the news and um, we kept hearing that only, you know, um, about a hundred mobile homes were still standing. And um, I still kept praying and having hope that, you know, mine was one of those hundreds. And um, I kept listening to the streets because they kept naming the street, the streets of our home. And I wouldn't hear my streets. So I kept thinking, oh my gosh, you know, there's still hope. Um, but later on in the news, they told us that, you know, um, to go to the Silmar High School and they were going to be, you know, listing the mobile homes that were saved. And um, it wasn't until um, I saw that my number, my space number wasn't up there, it, you know, that's when reality hit me. And um, I knew that mine wasn't the one that was standing. So where are you living now? Um, in the meantime, I'm going to be staying with my parents until um, hopefully they start rebuilding soon and start a new life again. Wow. Are you okay? Um, I am. I, I'm, I'm still in shock. <laughs> I'm still in shock. Um, I think as time goes by, it's going to, you know, hit me even more. It's going to. But um, like I said, I have two daughters and I have to be strong and just, you know, build a new life and start over. I understand. Well, good luck, Anna, and thank you for calling and reporting to us. Thank you. Thank you for um, for listening. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, first thing, my heart goes out to the people who lost their homes, but I have an experience that happened. I worked for Sears, and I was head up the 57 freeway on Saturday afternoon. I was in my Sears van. And I'm I'm just coming up to Imperial Highway, and then just all hell broke loose. And I knew the fire was close, but I didn't know it was like that. And then all of a sudden, the firestorm just came over the top of the 57 and jumped over. I'm just scared out of my mind. I don't really know what to do. And uh, the CHP guy was right there. I rolled down my window. I said, what do we do? He says, I don't know whether to tell you to run, hide, back up, or do what. And at that very moment, it felt like Armageddon. And I was the third car up. So I couldn't get back off of Imperial Highway. I didn't know whether to run or anything, but they finally did get up to Imperial Highway, and it was it was it was incredible. Wow! And uh, uh, how long did it take you to get home that night? Well, the thing with that Tom was is that they were able to get me off the 57 in about 20 minutes. But the problem was they diverted me down Imperial Highway all the way back to the 91, and, and as we that, that fire was coming this way. So we had to stop a couple of times, and it was scary that way. And I called family once I got on the 91 and said, dude, this is real. It's like a life-changing experience. Sure it is. And I, I feel so bad for the people that lost their homes. Because I actually, you know, you see it on TV, but it's really different when you're there. And um, it, it's just terrible. But anyway, I just want to share that with you because it was, it was pretty scary. <laughs> Jeff, thank you for the story. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Bill on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, thanks. Hey, um, first-time caller. Sure. 51 years old. Uh, sitting on the couch Saturday morning. My wife says, hey, your brother called. He's being evacuated uh, out of Corona. I don't think much because he's the kid who cries wolf a lot. So I'm doing my emails. Wife's kind of running around gathering her belongings, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, nah, lightning doesn't strike twice to the same guy. I lost everything in a fire 25 years ago uh, when I was younger, and basically I had to start over as a Red Cross victim. And uh, so I'm I'm thinking I'm cool, I'm safe, but. 
two seconds later, she opens the garage door, and all the neighbors are just panicked. All the my side of the street has a lot of uh, single moms, and they're just panicked. They're throwing just everything that you can imagine into their cars, and I I go out and look, and I'm thinking, oh man, we're in trouble. The, my neighborhood is at the very end of La Palma, right on the riverbed, as low as you can get. So that riverbed torched like you would not believe. I mean, it 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 literally came upon us so fast that the neighbors were just freaking out. I'd say 90% of them evacuated. There was no emergency uh, back 911 call. There was no notice. There wasn't anything. We just had ourselves to uh, to respond to this. So uh, half the neighborhood split. The other half, well, I should say a couple of guys stayed back, and uh, I, I literally had to convince my wife I was following them. My son, who's 19, he got in his car with a bunch of stuff. My wife pulled out of her car with all her stuff loaded in it. I had my stuff in my car, and I said, you know what, I'm going right behind you. I did a little little fake move on her. She took off. I shut the door of the car, and I, and I started running down uh, the neighbor's house because I could see palm trees uh, were lighting up. That's what really got our neighborhood was the palm trees. The palm trees were lighting up left and right. We were running from house to house, putting out, you know, small fires in palm trees, small fires in the backyard. Fortunately, the uh, the neighborhood's got tile and stucco house. Uh, uh, that's what they're made of. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I'm out of time. By the way, go to blowmeuptom.com. Learn how to contribute. Learn how to help. It's the Tom Likas Show.